What's up guys, War here, and today I'm going to bring you my class, what I think is the best class in Diablo 3 Season 30. Let's do it. So guys, we're back in Season 30 for Diablo 3, and it is the previous two seasonal themes collided into one we all know that the altar is going to be back but season 30 is adopting season 29's theme which is those portals but as per usual i had to go through and do it just for the cosmetics so we're going to swap over i already got my seasonal journey done and knocked out you can see we got the really really nice cosmetic here on my character just looking dope but Today is all about the best class in Season 30, and that is God DH Speeds. So, as per usual, we're going to break down everything you need to know for the build. The brand new Demon or Terror Shards, all the brand new Shards, and the ones that I am using for this build. And just do a quick little showcase. So, if you guys are familiar with God DH, Gears of the Dreadlands, it is a very, very popular and powerful build. Even with some of the changes that came with season 30 this build still stands tall among the rest okay so i'm going to briefly just kind of go through everything that i have i'm going to do a showcase and then we're going to talk about the um the brand new shards that i'm using for the build so you're going to need gears of the dreadlands you're going to need all six pieces however this is not going to be the hadred's gift this is going to be one you're just going to have to get later you're going to get the marauder set with the hadred's gift if you start with dh but it's really really easy to just farm out the rest of the pieces so of course we're doing all six okay we're doing all six uh we actually need to change one thing because this is no longer here uh crap 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 we gotta change one thing you guys didn't see any of this you guys didn't see any of this one piece is missing one piece is missing we got to go at it i had five pieces because i didn't i didn't i didn't have all six yet and then i got all six there we go okay let's go update and save you guys didn't see this save boom we're good okay so you need all six pieces all right the reason being is because at a two piece you're going to get momentum stacks when you get to 20 you're going to get um an increase in damage per momentum stack stacking up to 20 strafing enemies will automatically shoot your primary skill which is going to be devouring arrow hungering arrow which is the main main skill for this build and then we're going to have our primary skills deal 27,000 and a half increased damage. Really, really strong. Okay, we're taking all six pieces. No Ring of Royal Grandeur. Okay, we are doing Hunter's Wrath in the belt because our primary skills will not only attack faster, but do more damage. Then we're pairing it with Wraps of Clarity, guys. This just makes our Hatred generator Generators give us reduced damage for 45 seconds. That's really easy to do when you're using your main one. You're going to see Wraps pop up. Super easy. No-brainer. helps us stay alive. Then we got Squirts for even more damage. Double damage is good. Then we got Focus and Restraint. Now, you're probably asking yourself, like, well, when we shoot and our, get our 20 momentum stacks here, we're just going to be flying around. And you see how long it takes it's a five second delay for it to start to go down and you all you gotta do is hit it once because the focus and restraint is going to trigger for about five to six seconds so it's not too bad you can keep that up pretty much a hundred percent and that's even more damage okay then of course we have to go with dawn the reason that we're going with dawn is because we're reducing the cooldown of vengeance by 65 percent we need to have a huge cooldown percentage in order to have 100 percent uptime on this super easy to do as long as you get to about 37 percent cooldown in totality from all your gear you'll have 100 percent uptime with a maximum dawn maximum dawn at 65,000 or 65,000 65 percent and then in this one, you guys can really mix up with this. I like Valor's Bequest because it allows all strafe projectiles to pierce, okay? Now the gems that we are going with are going to be Simplicity Strength for even more primary skill damage. Then we got Bane of the Trapped, which is the best gem in the game. And then we got Tegduk for even more um, damage, but more importantly, we get an additional armor stack, um, at, you know, stacking up every single time we use a channeled skill, which will be strafe so looking at our skills guys we're going to go over to it but first in the cube we got the nice series satchel of course hunger and arrows guaranteed to pierce and it also it does some increased damage okay we got depth diggers for primary skill damage 100 
if you have the option even in other builds depth diggers it's really easy just to put this in there because you get the full 100 and then of course convention of elements on rotation we're going to be doing a lot of damage here all right now if you don't want to use a uh, valor's bequest you can always come in and do fortress ballista if you feel like you are a little bit squishy uh you can just get an, an additional shield which is really really nice if you don't want to use convention of elements you can always use um elusive ring for even more damage reduction in the cube so that way every single time we cast smoke screen you'll get the additional damage so into our skills hungering arrow devouring arrow cold we're gonna pierce super strong strafe with drifting shadow you can change this okay i like drifting shadow because i like to be a little bit faster however rocket storm is my preferred substitute so if you feel like you're fast enough no big deal rock uh, do rocket storm and you do even more damage okay then we have smoke screen special recipe this just allows us to move faster focus mind preparation to gain even more discipline i chose wolf companion for more damage however if you are squishy you can always come over and do uh fan of knives bladed armor for even more additional armor just to make you survive a little bit longer then of course dark heart vengeance okay just more damage even more damage reduction into our passives here we got cold of the week for damage against slow and chilled ambush for dealing additional damage to enemies above 75 percent health okay thrill of the hunt for even more slow which helps trigger cold of the week and then i'm doing archery here for one hatred per second or excuse me uh the extra five percent crit chance on hand crossbows however if you do want to move a little bit faster tactical advantage is very very strong here you could do either one uh, if you feel like you don't need the crit you will move faster with this so that is the skills those are the skills that we have for the build guys um you could do any one of the potion ones i just have the life per hit this one is really really good just to help keep us stay alive okay i'm gonna talk about the two legendary gems after we do a little showcase here we are just gonna do a quick little um 90 no big deal we're gonna do a 90 and we're gonna talk about how to play the build so all you're gonna do is you're gonna start you're gonna rack up your 20 stacks you can see here we got 20 stacks in the excuse me we are just gonna strafe that is it you're kind of like elite hunting in a way because you're going to kill so many more mobs along the way. It's no big deal. You just kind of roll. Right? Get your shield pylon. Now, I will talk briefly about how to kind of gear up your follower for this, especially if you are a solo player. Super easy to do. And you just kind of just mob through. And again, guys, I'm only at 635 Paragon because uh, I kind of just speed ran this in basically a day so it wasn't too long to kind of get to this point in diablo 3 for a brand new season that's another reason why i love this game so much it's so fun you can do still do like sub two minutes even at this lower level of uh paragon you don't need to be super super high to just farm 90s i also have zero augments i do have the one uh what is it ancient or the ashes i have my my dawn ash so it's a primal ancient which is super easy to do uh we found some some primal ancients fairly early on right after we hit 70 so it was pretty easy to get the ashes and able to do that we also don't even have our altar all the way maxed we only have it up to a certain point i think i only put five into it five or six levels into it and boom we're done minute and a half sub two minutes guys you can just absolutely blast with this with all the patch notes the build still was super strong it didn't didn't receive a whole lot of nerfs at all a lot of the other build variations for marauders and impale got some huge buffs and nerfs but this build still reigns supreme i think over all of them real quick i want to go see sub two minutes easy peasy on a 90 you could probably do this even better at the higher ones but for your follower so this is what you're going to need you're going to need flavor of time this is going to allow our pile on effects to last twice as long pretty much the entire time you're in the um greater rift nemesis when you hit a shrine you're going to spawn elites that's huge gloves of worship make the shrine effects last for 10 minutes okay you're going to need uh, homing pads make sure your follower has your follower connect cannot die really helps with nemesis bracers okay we have um oculus ring stone of jordan you don't really need I'm rocking the ones for double death breasts at the moment. However, you would change this just for 
farming, but because we're speed farming, it's not a big deal. Now, let's go in and just showcase the two brand new shards. Now, these were a previous uh, theme in a earlier season, and they were really, really cool, but they brought them back. So we're using two different um, shards, okay? We're using the Shard of Terror, and we're also using the Remnant of Pain shard, okay? This is a primary shard, and this is not a primary shard. So what happens is, is that when you get these shards, they can level up three times. Okay, and as you level them up, you're going to see that some abilities are gonna be ticked and some are not. The ones that are ticked are the ones that have the orange icon in this case. The gray icons are the ones that you don't get. So each one of these, when you go to level up, it's gonna give you a certain amount of affix affixes on there. However, we didn't get all the ones that we actually wanted on here, but we did get a few that we did like. So these two are the best for this build. Reason being is because of silver or sliver of terror. Is going to give us cooldown reduction resource cost reduction and then uh exp in gold which is huge but more importantly we get our attack speed and crit hit chances are increased by five percent for each skill on cooldown every single skill that we have goes to cooldown all of them go to cooldown so that's an extra 20 percent guys super strong and then our cooldowns are increased by 25 percent for every skill on cooldown which is four we take 12.5 percent reduced damage and deal 12.5% increased damage. Huge buff here, okay? Now, I do wish that we we hit the life, the 23% life, but overall, this one is absolutely fantastic. This is the one we, we do need a little bit of help on. However, this one is super strong. What we're looking for on the Remnant of Pain, we want the crit hit damage increased by 150%. The damage against elites is what we want. We want life per hit instead of thorns. And then the bottom two we should always get by hitting enemies with cold damage, which we're using cold damage with our hungering arrow. When hitting them with that, we have a 50% chance to freeze them. Cold skill damage is increased by frozen targets by 20%. And then our critical hit chance is reduced by 15%. Attacks against uh, incapacitated enemies are automatic crit. So we suffer a little bit of crit, but if we freeze them, they just auto die. They basically auto die. Okay, super easy to do. All right, so that's why I have a couple more down here because as soon as you get the first level ticked up, I want to see what I got. Again, we missed on that. This one, I missed again. We got fire skill damage, increased damage against elites. So we kind of missed there. We're looking to see if we can hit another one on there. We just got to get some more of those. So it is going to take a little bit of time to get those because uh, you got to find the the uh soul shards and then you actually got to find the items to upgrade them, which isn't too bad when you're just farming grid rifts. But yeah, guys, that is it. That is God Gears of the Dreadland DH. It is still a monster build and among my favorites, but this is the one I use to basically blast through the entire season 30. And it's been an absolute, basically an absolute blast to play this game again in the brand new season. I didn't want this video to go too long, but I wanted to really showcase the build and some of the cosmetics. And the Altar of Rights is back. You guys can see I've only gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I haven't even done anything else with this we just absolutely blasted but yeah guys like the video comment down below uh let me know what you're playing in season 30 and if this guy does help you out don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace